Good afternoon, everyone. Our topic today is modernization of Intuit Online Payroll using event-driven architecture. I'm Hema Marimuthu, Principal Software Engineer on the Intuit Online Payroll team, leading operational excellence and security. Vijit is here with me today. He is the Principal Software Engineer for Numaproj. If you haven't heard of Intuit, Intuit is a global financial technology company that's building an AI-native development platform that serves 100 million customers across various brands, TurboTax, Credit Karma, QuickBooks, and MailChimp. We are really excited to be here at KubeCon this year as we are big users of open source tooling and have a commitment of giving back to the open source community. A little bit more about our platform. Our AI-native development platform is massive in scale and supports over 4 million models running in production every other day, has helped 8x developer velocity over the past four years, and powers 60 billion machine learning predictions and 40 million AOPS inferences per day. One of the most exciting parts about working at Intuit is how much open source software we use to build a development platform. We are proud to be the recipients of the End User Award from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation in 2019 and 2022. And we are proud to create and open source many projects here at Intuit, like Argo, which I'm sure many of you know, and the one that we are about to present, the Numa Proj. Now let's move into the core part of the presentation. How NumaFlow helped QuickBooks Online Payroll enhance the event-driven architecture? Let's quickly take a look at how QuickBooks Online Payroll supports our small business customers to understand the importance of how NumaFlow helped us. From payroll to time tracking and HR to benefits, our team management software grows with the small business team and their needs. Trusted payroll from payday to tax time, meaning set payroll to a schedule and get payroll taxes done for you, 100% accurate tax calculations guaranteed. Your team can track their own hours, making it easy to manage timesheets, projects, and schedules from anywhere. Helps grow your team with HR support and offer affordable employee benefits to help your team grow with you. Considering all of the points discussed, it's evident how crucial it is for this application to be fully available, scalable, and to operate with high efficiency and resilience. Here are the challenges we faced with the eventing systems. We were not able to optimize cost effectively as our auto-scaling mechanisms lacked the ability to scale based on incoming messages. We lacked the observable nature for messaging traffic, which basically increased the mean time to detect and resolve. We had region-based JVMs and databases, so we had to discard messages heavily as we did not have the ability to forward message to the intended databases. Now let's take a look at what NumaFlow is and what it has solved for us. NumaFlow is a Kubernetes native tool for running event-driven applications. And NumaFlow pipeline is implemented as a Kubernetes custom resource and consists of one or more source, data processing, and sync vertices. Let's dive deep into the NumaFlow pipeline. NumaFlow pipeline can be implemented in any form, from trees to directed graphs to cycles as a custom resource, and we have implemented with three vertices, the source, transformer, and the sync. The source vertex can read the message from any topics available on any source system. It can be JMS, Kafka, SNS, or any source in the future. Transformer vertex can be used to identify the sync based on any unique type of headers. It can also be used for modularization where n number of workloads are handled, meaning listening to the same topic but persisting data in different ways. Sync vertex can process the message and commit to the database. Each vertex here has scaling ability based on incoming messages and processing rate. The semantics that NumaFlow follows is at least once, and it has a persistence layer for resiliency, which guarantees no data loss. If an application database happens to be under maintenance, we have a fallback mechanism where messages will be written to the dead letter queue and available for consumption when database is back online. 
This avoids back pressure buildup and unnecessary auto-scaling events, eventually optimizing the cost. Pneumoflow pipeline has a very expressive user interface, as you can see. The in is the source vertex, and the custom out one is the sink vertex. The numbers near the gear represents the number of pods available on each vertex, and the per second is the processing rate on each vertex. The lag between the vertices are shown in between. There are details available on each vertex. Let's take a look one by one. Here is the information about the source vertex, basically your logs. There are two containers, the NUMA and the user-defined containers. The user-defined containers has logs based on partitions and offsets of the topics that we are consuming from. These come from your application images. Here is the sync vertex, and the user-defined sync vertex has information on message processing events, relieving pain in debugging and eventually decreasing mean time to resolve. We used the same application image, which we integrated with the NumaFlow SDK and just did message processing without having the need to integrate with other eventing systems where we need to work on enabling network connections, maintaining the certs, implementing resiliency for messages, and on top, building monitoring and alerting systems. NumaFlow, in addition, was able to do conditional forwarding to specific databases, avoiding message discards after processing. You need to know what to discard. So we were literally processing to avoid the messages. Pneumoflow pipeline for even-driven application proved beneficial to achieve excellence in product and operational aspects. Product excellence is backed by seamless integration with messaging systems and advanced event processing features, which avoids message discarding after processing as it is unnecessary resource utilization at this point, and it minimizes back pressure during database maintenance. Moving to operational aspects, we have auto-scaling that could start from zero and increase based on incoming messages and the processing rate. Pneumoflow guarantees no data loss, provides out-of-the-box metrics for real-time monitoring, and comes with an expressive UI interface with debugging abilities. This is a huge benefit for all on-call teams, and it has the ability to replay messages on demand. Obviously, the system consuming should take care of item potency. Pneumoflow has the ability to modularize pipeline based on source, topic, or the application. And the pipeline can coexist on the same namespace and can be deployed along with the application. Here is our payroll architecture. After integrating our systems with Pneumoflow SDK, our payroll application is backed by n number of plugins and services and 30% of the traffic being asynchronous. Basically, we had a monolithic application which we decomposed into n number of services, and as and when the services grew, the need for segregating traffic became a must. So we can detect issues, triage, and recover faster. Basically, this is a success story with the adoption of Pneumoflow. From what we have experienced, it's very evident that the major factors such as availability, scalability, resiliency, and cost optimization that is critical to the business has been addressed. Now, Vijit will take you through the demo of the Pneumoflow. Thank you, Hema. So I'll start with what Pneumoflow is in general. Um, it, it's a directed uh, compute graph. Um, it's agnostic to uh, Kafka or any system. The way it happens is you read something from source. Source could be anything. It could be any, any uh, streaming system, any unbounded system. And then uh, users can inject their own user-defined functions. It, it, uh, it, it could be flat maps. And it could be any complex function you want, uh, an LLM if need be. Right? We also have the support for conditional forwarding where you can make a runtime decision whether you want to choose A versus B or both. And lastly, it goes to a sync. Sync is the final vertex. And the guarantee Pneumoflow provides is between source and sync that no data will ever be lost or corrupted. The way we have, uh, so what Pneumoflow is about, it's completely open source, right? Um, and the way we started giving out to, into it is reconsidering how to show Pneumoflow to users, because 
uh, pipelines are tricky. They are, it could get very complex. So the way we looked into it is how can we do serverless for event processing? First and foremost is abstracting the infrastructure. It means that the system, once you deploy on Numaflow, should be fire and forget. If there are pod migration, node migrations, cluster upgrades, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't bother the developers, and it can auto-scale on demand. Second is decoupling from source and things. What it means is that the developers are really interested in the payload. They're not really interested in where you're reading it from. For example, you could read from Kafka, from HTTP, from any endpoint, but what is in the payload what is what it matters the most. So we decouple the sources and things so you can share it between different teams. It's very powerful when you have, for example, when you're reading from Kafka and you have your own enterprise level security plugins. So we had to make sure that the same thing is not done over and over. And lastly, it is about scale and reliability, meaning we need to deploy vulnerability patches and things like that without having any downtime whatsoever. So we need to have a platform that could do it. Let me quickly show you what it means to write one of those transformation uh, steps. This is, the, this is the Python example. I have noted it as Python here. Um, uh, we are language agnostic. We support many, many languages. Um, the handler is all about you are given a datum and you return messages. The first is you create an envelope to return. Datum.value will give you the data. You can call any complex computation from here on. It can take however time it wants to take, and it gives the result. You put the result. There could be one or more results, zero, one or many results. You put it in the envelope, and you return. It doesn't have any error handling or any where it is coming from, because platform takes care of error handling, retries, and what, and anything that you need for running at scale. Even the auto-scaling, everything is taken care of. We also support, so if you see here, you, it also supports dynamic routing, meaning you can tag a message saying that take the left or right or uh, whichever route it wants to take. Um, there are different uh, shapes and size that it comes with. You could have multiple sources. You could do joins. You could uh, do cycles if you need. And lastly, you have something called a side input. This is quite important because these are unbounded systems, and you want to propagate changes to the system without tearing down the system. Now, I talked about, in general, what it takes to write a user-defined transformer, but you might have to write your own source, for example, because you have some proprietary source you want to read from, and how easy it is to write a source. This is an example in Rust. Um, all you need to do is implement these, three, these four functions, read, act, pending, and partition, and then it can, you can replace Numaflow source with your custom source. And this is how you write it in Java for a custom sync. Uh, that is, you are given an iterator, you just read, um, put, put it in wherever the sync is and just respond whether it's a success or a failure. If it is a failure, we will retry. If you want, you can let it respond something called a fallback and it will write to a DLQ. This is an extremely high level architecture. Um, okay. um, yeah, so the data moves from left to right, back pressure moves from uh, right to left. We use that back pressure to auto scale and you could have n number of vertices in between. I, I'll show you a running demo of this. Let me see. OK, so let me now show you a demo, OK? Sorry, give me one second. Uh, now, this part of the system is not open source. We are building it into it, trying how it works, and then open source under a new concept called NUMA, Numa plane. That is a control plane for NUMA flow. So for, let's say, Hema from payroll team to use NUMA flow, uh, she does not have to do a lot of YAMLs or anything. You could say, I want to create. Now, it comes in two flavors. One is a lightweight pipeline, one is a custom pipeline. Most cases, you need a lightweight pipeline because this is when you are just reading from a source and writing to a sink. Custom pipeline is when you want very complex things. For example, this is, uh, I don't know how visible this is, but this is a complex anomaly detection platform I can do it. it um, uh, uh, yeah create and, uh, pages and incidents if there is a failure on users using TurboTax or QuickBooks. So this, this does training. This does too many things. OK. So, but uh, this, this is where a pipeline comes into play. But anyways, I, I, I will try to uh, build one. So how it goes is, let's say I want to do QCon demo. One, then uh, I can choose. Even bus here means that this Induits Kafka. Yeah, it has its own uh, ID, uh, encryption policies and things like that. You can choose your own source. You can choose your event bus. You drag. Then you write your user-defined function. Then you can say, OK, I'm going to write to a 
my custom sync, and maybe I'll also write to a log while I'm at it. Right, then you can just drag drop. Now you say create a pipeline topology. So it creates the pipeline topology. This, this is all about internal uh, IDs creation to make sure that we have seamless access. Then I can say deploy. Then it says, OK, where do you want to deploy to? You can let me get my like, couple of sources, OK? So this is the event bus topic name. The event bus is, again, Kafka. OK, just in, uh, replace it with Kafka. Then uh, these are all internal policy IDs and things like that for encryptions and things like that. Then uh, secret key is secret for now. And I, that's it. So, OK, I saved this. Now I can, for user-defined function, I, I, if I want, I can name it. Uh, the image is this. Then I can say my entry arc should be something like this. Then I can add an environment field if you want be. Sorry, app underscore env ql. Save environment. And then I can, yeah, I, I clicked a UD sync also in between. So I need to do a little bit more here. Add a, oh, give me one second. Add a field. Save us. Okay, now I can say create PR. And um, it will tell you whether what went wrong while creating. So it runs a complete. Um, Validation. This is a transpiler that runs through, and it can tell you, okay, it says that the topic not found, right? So th this is the way we create. And once I pre I'm not going to fix this error now. I just wanted to show how it works. Now, if I close it, what you see is there are a couple of ones that is running it down. So I could, for example, click. Uh, let's say I take this one, right? I can click on this, and I, I can see how the pipeline is running. Now, when I come back here, this was the. Uh, pipelines that are running in the same asset, you will see that there is a uh, mono vertex. So this is the one that I talked about, mono vertex. This is a single pipeline that could do encapsulate the entire thing. Because in many cases, you just read, need to read from a source. You need to do some transformations, and then you need to write to some sync. But when you have some complex cases, for example, you want to write a pipeline, you will do something like this. You have a source, you have some UDF, you have some logs. And you can see the logs. And we also show some metrics around it so that the users are able to debug things to understand. Uh, for example, let's say I take this one, OK? Uh, this, uh, you could see more, let's say, if a uh, transformer, you can choose what you want to see. And also, uh, uh, we are planning the 1.5 roadmap will also contain how to do in, in, uh, inbuilt debugging experience. The whole experience is actually integrated with Argo. What it means is that you can, um, this health status in Argo actually reflects the pipeline status. So if there is a pipeline health or any back pressure generated by pipeline, we will, we will know about that. Uh, you could, for example, let's say I take my a vertex. I can post a pipeline. So it's well integrated with Argo ecosystem. And I could even say details. And I believe, yeah. The, there's an, this is mostly, the integration is mostly like Argo rollouts integration, so you can do progressive deliveries and things like that. Right, you know what the status is, where we are, and things like that. Now, let me, uh, yeah, so the, uh, I'll just quickly show mono vertex, just, uh, just be, to show you what is the difference between a mono vertex and a um, uh, pipeline is, because, let's say if I say create a pipeline, right, I won't click through everything. The, uh, so if you see here, the experience is a little different. In many cases, what users want is they want to read from Kafka. They want to do some, or any SQS, SNS, it doesn't matter. You want to do simple transformations and write to a database. There is no need to have independently auto-scaling vertices. Uh, the major reason why users want independent auto-scaling is when you are using, let's say, a ML pipeline, or else you are doing very heavy computation or external RPC calls where the auto scaling need to be different. But uh, while uh, working for payroll, we found out that actually in Intuit, many applications need to read, meaning uh, read to read from Kafka and write it to a sync without any pending data. Right? So we had to scale both of them together. And this is very cheap because the platform latency in this use case is less than one millisecond. Versus if you have a complete pipeline which have multiple vertex, each hope is a network hope that goes to a rough protocol. Right? That's how we make sure that no data will be ever lost. 
This one has less than zero, uh, less than, sorry, less than one millisecond latency induced. So here the same story. The code does not change. It's just a pipeline spec that changes. So if I, I add a transformer, I add again an event bus, and then if you want, I can add a DLQ. Right, I need a name, let's say MVTX, right? And I do create topology. It creates, and then I can deploy, and then I can go ahead. So this is how we are doing it at Induit for developers at scale, because we have like thousands of developers who does asynchronous programming, right? and we wanted to make it accessible without much of YAML or how even abstract out Kubernetes to a decent extent, because they don't have to run any Kubernetes-specific commands. The, the Argo CD is the process they come to Kubernetes in this. If you look at the UI, you really can't operate. The UI, he, what you see here is a little different because it does not have admin operations. Uh, it does not let you pause, delete, or create a pipeline through UI. But the open source UI has those options, so you can, uh, you can actually create a pipeline just by, let's say, I, don't, I, I did not see that option here because th these are uh, production uh, clusters, right? You do not see that. Now let me get back to. Yeah, so it's just to summarize, right? What is NumaFlow? Uh, it's a Kubernetes native stream processing system for running at scale, and uh, we started off it for developing it for machine learning use cases, but then we made it general purpose for everyone to use. So first and foremost, is, uh, it is very lightweight. We have users outside of Intuit uh, using it on edge, on-prem, and other things. You can look into our users.md. It's growing. We are still small, but you can see that. Uh, we are language agnostic. Yeah, pipe, the complex pipeline I told, right, showed, it could be in multiple languages. Each vertex could be, it's a polyglot, like you can have one vertex in Java, another in Python, and so forth. By default, we give a lot of built-in sinks and sources so that um, it's easy for uh, community to use. And it's quite easy to write your own sources and things because that, that's very useful for really extending the platform. Lastly, it's all about auto-scaling. Like Hema mentioned a lot about auto-scaling. It can literally auto-scale to zero, right, and zero to many. That's quite important because uh, when you deploy these kind of systems at scale, there are a lot of different traffic patterns that come in, and we need to minimize cost as much as we can. Uh, and the autoscaler is a custom autoscaler, which is just queued up analysis. We do support uh, HP and Keda if need be, but our default autoscaler is capable of doing zero to many. And lastly, it's, uh, it runs on very less uh, resource footprint. Now, this is our uh, project. Uh, if you want, uh, you can scan. This is the link to NumaFlow. Uh, That's all I, we had. Uh, any, any questions? We'll open up for questions. Thank you. Question? Oh, there it goes. Um, is there a means of aggregating events in there, or is it one event to, like, one source to one sync? No, you could aggregate events. Uh, we support complete streaming semantics. For example, if you have user-defined functions, you could do reduce operation windowing, which supports fixed sliding and uh, sessionization. Cool. Hey, I have a question. Uh, is there a way that we can stream the data, like video streams, uh, connecting the sources to RTSP or something like that? You could, you could. So I can tell you a use case where actually one of our uh, referenced users in the users.md, they uh, use uh, NumaFlow to listen in audio signals, to do audio processing to see whether there's um, wheels in motion uh, are misaligned or not. So you can totally use any binary stream whatsoever. We are agnostic to the payload or the payload type. Okay, yeah, we have a use cases where we need to connect to the live cameras, stream the video, like ingest, and then we do the inferencing as well, right? So if you have any use cases or an example, that would be helpful for us. Yeah, absolutely, you can join our Slack channel. I believe the uh, user who does it is quite active. Uh, UK, uh, you can come to our Slack channel and uh, we should be able to talk to them. Okay, I have another question. So. Uh, do you have a Helm chart or a Kubernetes operator to install NumaFlow? I see that it's 
having like we have to use the kubectl but is there no, a way no, no, to no we do have help chart uh, we do have uh, there you go help chart and this is all open, open source okay the, uh, except for the ui i showed to create a pipeline the rest of the things are open source so yes okay sounds good thank you any more questions or we'll end it early. I have one more that I might have just missed. Is this deployed as an operator? It is. Okay. It's a custom resource that is deployed, yeah, CRD. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.